Hi all, Jo here from Oops A Daisy. This is the third video in my 2024 journal setup and today I'm going to be looking at annual goals and trackers using my word of the year unplugged as a focus. Since my last video I've set up a 24 in 2024 spread to record the cinema challenge that I discussed whilst choosing my word of the year. If you'd like to take a look at the process of choosing this word I'll pop a link above. Today I'm going to be looking more closely at a year in pixel spread something that I admitted in the last video I've never completed successfully. Before I continue with the setup, I wanted to take a moment to invite you all to join our Journal with Oops Daisy programme. We have built together a step-by-step -step guide for setting up your perfect journal with guidance in the form of blog posts, step-by-step -step videos and digital downloads. In order to join, all that we ask is that you make a small donation to our chosen charity, St Clair Hospice, there is no minimum donation, just give what you can afford. To find out more, head to the link on the screen. I mentioned earlier that I've never successfully completed a year in pixel style spread, so you may be wondering why am I attempting it again? Well, this year I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Rather than attempt to track one metric throughout the entire of 2024, I'm going to break it down and focus on a new habit or goal for each month of the year. I'm hoping that this approach will stop me from getting bored and help me meet my goal of completing an entire year in pixel spread. The layout will be created over two pages with the left hand side holding my habit trackers for the year and the right hand side spaces to log what habits I'll be tracking. As you can see, I've used the rainbow boxes in order to split the right hand page into spaces for each month of the year. The rainbow box I've used for this is the pink square which fits 12 times on a page with a space between each box. I'm using a B5 size journal, which if you're new to journaling, you may not be familiar with. B5 falls in between A5 and A4 in size, giving me a little bit more space than a standard A5 journal. I personally prefer this size as it gives me room to create a functional spread, whilst also leaving space for decorations such as washi tape and headers, etc. If you're new to journaling, you may want to experiment with different journal sizes to find out what works well for you. Creating a 12 box spread in an A5 journal rather than a B5 journal would simply mean that each box needs to be slightly smaller in order to fit on the page. This means you have a little bit less room in each box for writing your monthly focus. Our rainbow boxes are available in A5 and B5 variations, so if you wanted to use these to speed up your setup, you would simply choose the size that works for your journal. I have now moved over to the left hand page where I've used our B5 2024 monthly habit tracker stencil to create a habit tracker shape for each of the months of the year. The habit tracker shape is a visual representation of the days in the month with a single dot grid box for each day. As I move through the year, each space within the monthly habit tracker is colored to note that the habit was completed on that particular day. Of course, if you don't have our stencil, you can totally draw these shapes out by hand. But as you know, by now, I love me a stencil for speeding up the process. If you do want details of any of the supplies I've used in this setup, check out the description box below the video. I have now added a header to the spread using our A5 Blossom font stencil and the header that I've added is a year in pixels, one month at a time. With the basic structure of the spread complete, I can now add some decoration in the form of stickers and washi tape. I'll be using the Be Awesome Days and Dates stickers to add monthly headers to each of the 12 boxes and habit trackers. It's important to note that stickers and washi and really any supplies other than your basic notebook and a pen are not necessary in order for you to journal. If like me, pretty stationery helps keep you engaged in the hobby, then great, but it shouldn't be a barrier to getting started. While I finish up my decorations and colour in my header, I wanted to share a little bit more detail about how I plan on using this spread. I intend to add a dedicated page within each of my monthly setups which focuses on the habit that I've chosen to track for the month. This could be anything from and completing a new morning routine, hitting a step goal or listening to an audiobook. Basically anything that aligns with my unplugged word of the year. Within this page, I can share more information about the habit I'll be focusing on, 
my reason for choosing it and how I will measure it. Remember, it's really important to make sure that every goal is smart, specific, measured, achievable, realistic and timed. All of these pages together with this initial spread will form a collection in my bullet journal. A bullet journal collection is a number of pages or spreads which cover the same topic, in this case habit tracking. Collections can really cover any topic you're interested in with reading, self-care, exercising, crafts and sports to name just a few. Because you may not be creating spreads all at the same time, a strategy is needed to cluster them together so that you can easily find all layouts that cover the same topic. There are a few different ways you can do this, such as creating an index where you will add page numbers to list all the pages within a collection, or threading where again you will use page numbers but rather than add to an index, you add the previous page number from the collection to the bottom of the next page, creating a thread of pages that cover a topic. I've covered these concepts in more detail in a recent blog post over on the Oopsie Daisy website. If you're interested in reading this, I'll pop the link in the description below. While you're there, make sure you sign up for notifications from our blog if you want to be informed when we drop new content. This is a great time to mention that if you'd also like reminders when new videos drop on our YouTube channel, then now is the time to click that subscribe button. It also makes me a very happy bunny as I know that you're enjoying the videos that I'm creating. For this particular setup, I'm going to be using the washi tape color coding method to group together the pages that form the collection. In order to do this, you will need to choose a washi tape that will act as the color coding for the collection that you're working on. This could be something themed to suit your topic or just a colour that works well with your journal. In order to colour code your pages, we take the washi and apply it down the side of the page, taking care to have half adhere to the page and half laying over the side. You will then fold this piece over the page head edge and adhere it to the reverse side of the page, meaning that when you close your journal, you should be able to see a glimpse of the pattern on the page edge. Adding washi in this way to multiple spreads creates a visual guide to which pages form part of the collection. As I'm a very visual person, colour coding works really well for me. If you'd rather not have washi tape running all the way down the side of your page, you could just add a small strip of tape to the side of the spread, which actually leads me to a slight variation on the washi colour coding method where it is the location of the washi strip and not its colour that indicates that pages are part of the same collection. Maybe have all of one collection having washi strips at the top of the page, a second collection on the side top, a third on the side middle, fourth on the side bottom and fifth on the bottom of the page. By using this method, you can mix up the pattern of the washi depending on the page and simply the presence of any washi on that location on the page edge indicating that they belong to the same group. The last thing I need to add to my spread is an area where I can record the percentage of the month that I completed the habit that I'm tracking. To do this, I've added a little yellow line underneath each of the habit tracker boxes and just added in the percentage symbol to mark out that that is what I'm going to be tracking in that area. With the spread complete, it's time to take a look at my journal setup so far. So the first spread within my journal setup is my key where I lay out the coding that I will use throughout the journal. I've got a quote before I begin my 2024 a year in picture spread, my Dutch door future log, which I love. I've then got my word of the year spread with some very intricate washi tape letters. Love how this turned out. My 24 in 24 cinema spread, followed by the spread that you've just seen me create, which is my year in pixels. I'm loving how my journal is looking so far. All that I've got left to add in now is some trackers for my social media. And then next week I'll be going ahead and setting up my first monthly of the year for January, 2024. Thank you for journaling along with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you again very, very soon. Take care.